Welcome to the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast. I'm Tori Mystic, here with my dogs, Lucy and Bert. Together, we're interviewing cool, creative women entrepreneurs in the pet industry. Do you dream of working alongside your dog? Then sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode to find the inspiration and resources that will help you grow your own dog-inspired business. In this episode, I'm talking to an experienced pet industry pro with a background in corporate retail and professional fun. She's sharing some great advice about creating a successful brick and mortar pet business, like incorporating services into your retail shop. We also talk about how important pet birthdays are and how you can make them part of a special experience for your customers. Founded by Liel Michelle in 2006, Bow Wow Dog Bakery, formerly known as Bow Wow Beauty Shop, is an award-winning retro-themed dog bakery and pet boutique that also offers on-site pet grooming. Following a career in corporate retail management and corporate amusement park management, Liel was inspired by her pint-sized chihuahua, Frida, Standard Poodle Mumsy and Bichon Sugar to create a brand that utilizes her skills, creativity, and passion for catering to pets and pet parents. Liel also enjoys giving back to the pet industry with trade show speaking engagements at events like SuperZoo and Global Pet Expo. She contributes to print and online publications writing about topics such as pet store design, retail merchandising, client experience, and grooming salons. Welcome, Liel. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This is so much fun. Good. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. Uh, I started following you recently online, and just everything that you post is like so fun and also very on brand. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's, um, I think as an entrepreneur, I am in constant learn mode. And, uh, you know, I think it keeps it really exciting. So, you know, just, uh, although I've had the Instagram account, you know, forever and a day, I didn't really honestly start taking it seriously until about a year ago (laughs) so (laughs) we've been around a while but you know um so you know it's it's just like everything else in the uh entrepreneurial life i'm just constantly learning so um it's been really fun creating and um you know polishing uh the instagram account for all of our followers yeah and and making it a representation of you know what you deliver in real life um which speaking of you have an amazingly awesome (laughs) space um how did you let's let's go back in time and like tell us how you how you really got started i know you were inspired by frida and your other dogs but how did you start doing this (laughs) so in 2006 uh right before you know the great recession i um was in, I was working in the amusement and theme park industry and I loved that job. I, I honestly, I think on my resume, I, uh, my goal is to just put the most ridiculous jobs that anybody can do because it's always the most interesting at a dinner party, right? Yeah, that is one of the most interesting things I've ever read in someone's bio. Right? So good job. Yes, thank you. So um, after I, you know, I, I, I do need challenges. And so I had worked in the amusement park industry, uh, recruiting and hiring caricature artists, face painters and whatnot. And believe it or not, I needed a new puzzle. Um, so I, uh, you know, took a few months off and uh, really started to dig deep uh, as to what was always a constant theme or inspiration or passion in my life ever since I was a child, because, you know, they say that you go back to your childhood to, um, you know, find your passion. And Mm -hmm. so I did. And two reoccurring themes has always been art and animals. So uh, I started to look around and um, two blocks away from where I just moved in downtown San Diego um, or North Park area, there was a grooming salon uh, for sale. And so I really started to dig deep into the pet grooming and pet industry And I saw a lot of uh, growth opportunity in that sector. So I started to do my due diligence and I went to pet grooming school uh, while uh, negotiating a lease and a build out of a space uh, in San Diego. And um, though I think it's insane and I don't recommend that for anyone, (laughs) I think... (laughs) 
<laughs> I think the only way that I got through it all was that I did have quite a bit of uh, extensive corporate retail background that gave me a really good uh, foundation for um, doing such an insane thing. And um, so from there, you know, from 2006, we've had Bow Wow Beauty Shop until last year, we just moved, uh, you know, that location was sold. They were not giving us a long lease, le uh, a longer uh uh, lease and so we had to find a new location. So last year, uh, January 2018, we moved to a new location and that enabled me to be able to actually sell off the grooming portion of my business to a super fabulous uh, show groomer. He's like an international rock star in the grooming industry, Gabriel Fetosa. And so he actually now uh, runs uh, his own business in the back of my uh, boutique and bakery. And that allowed me the time to, uh, you know, open the bakery. And so the bakery was kind of a research project, a lot of R&D for about two years until we finally opened it. So um, it's been a, a, you know, fairly new venture, but really super exciting. But I have to say, it's it's not just been a two year um, time frame because I have sold other uh, people's products and or designed um, products and had other bakers make them exclusively for my store and what kind of pushed me to start my own bakery was that um, three dog bakery in Del Mar whom was making my custom treats for me um, she retired uh, and then I was kind of stuck you know, in a situation where I couldn't find the quality uh, and quantity that I needed. Um, and so I just, you know, decided to dig in and, and make a go of it myself. Yeah, that's obviously the really easy solution that everyone would think of. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> obviously have like really big ideas um and i i had no idea actually that just last year is when you kind of shifted things around that's pretty recent so what have what have you found to be um like the biggest difference between running a grooming business versus running what you have now which is really more of a, a boutique um is there anything that you miss or anything that you were happy to say goodbye to uh, you know, I think I really have the best of both worlds at this point. Um, you know, I still get to groom two very high maintenance uh, dogs. So Bichons and Standard Poodles are pretty much the two highest maintenance dogs you could groom, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, and I have my, you know, my, uh, the amazing grooming salon in the back. So I get to see all those clients, you know, that, that clientele that I've built up over the last 13 years come in and out all the time and they still see me. And I think it brings them comfort and you know I'm just there in a different role and so you know and the thing is with grooming grooming is a is truly an art it is so much hard work uh, everybody honestly tip your groomer big because it is <laughs> It's a really, really hard job. And I, you know, although most of the years I was not grooming, um, I kind of used myself as a uh, backup. Uh, but I, I do do, you know, quality grooming. But um, for me, I'm an entrepreneur. So I like to do a lot of different things. And if I'm the main person doing all the work, I cannot, you know, branch out. I cannot continue to be creative. Um, so I often had really, really talented groomers working for me and I couldn't have made it all those years without it. And so um, in order for me to, you know, grow as an entrepreneur, I really needed to um, hand that part of the business off to somebody else. Um, and I really wanted a, a groomer that was super quality focused um, to be able to handle the clientele that I had built up, you know, for so many years. Sure. And, you know, we, yeah, and we'd had the boutique for all those years. So because retail and uh, retailing and merchandising was in my corporate background, uh, boutiquing was very easy for me. Um, so then in January, just adding the bakery to that, um, just added a new layer, <laughs> which is definitely has its own challenges uh, for sure. So I think just as an entrepreneur, being able to uh, add a new puzzle and, uh, you know, add to the skill set, that's really what's exciting about the bakery for sure. That's very cool. So it's, it's not like a total shift. Um, it's just kind of adding an element. Um, 
I was I was looking on your website and I noticed that your bakery collection was created with guidance from veterinarians, um, and it's endorsed that the recipes are healthy, they're human grade, everything is USDA approved, all that kind of stuff. What was that process like? How did you um, find a vet to work with on that? Well, luckily, <laughs> um, after, you know, for years we've had a vet come to our location on site um, because uh, we offer uh, anesthesia free dental uh, cleaning and uh, you know one one day out of the month and so that requires you know a license on site and a veterinary on site to offer that so we do that one day a month and um, I had talked to uh, Dr. Spade about, you know, uh, you know, consulted with her on the best ingredients to use because having the groomer uh, background and understanding intimately how important uh, food can affect skin and coat conditions um, with regard to uh, a dog's, you know, fur and coat and everything, um, I wanted to ensure that I was not adding any issues uh, you know, to anybody's pet. So I wanted to improve, you know, upon right. that. And, and what I had noticed is that, you know, there were <clears throat> in the industry, and there's so many more amazing businesses coming out, you know, recently too, yes. but there generally was either all natural and okay looking or, you know, <laughs> really pretty and super unhealthy. And I really wanted to bridge the gap. So I wanted really beautiful, um, you know, a really beautiful bakery collection that was also extremely healthy and could actually add some benefits to the uh, coat and skin of uh, everybody's pets. So what are some of the ingredients that uh, that you include that sort of set your mm -hmm. creations aside? So we are grain free. So everything that we make is grain free. Um, I, you know, although that is always, you know, right now that's a very hot topic. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to touch on that right now. <laughs> I'll we'll just kind of gloss over that. For now. <laughs> right. And, and so, um, you know, we use uh, coconut flour and eggs and, um, uh, and peanut butter and, you know, everything is grain free or, you know, tapioca and yogurt, no sugar, you know, we'll use honey instead of sugar and yogurt instead of, you know, frosting and things like that. So, so it's all very uh, healthy and beneficial to the skin and coat. And I have not yet met a dog that did not like any of our cakes. So, you know, that's been really wonderful too. I mean, it honestly, it is so joyful to see every dog uh, that just really gets uh, a kick out of our treats and they get obsessed. I mean, we have people in the, you know, dogs in the neighborhood and that bring their humans to our shop and their humans had no idea we were even there, but the dogs <laughs> smell it. <laughs> The dogs smell it from blocks away and they come. So that's always super adorable. That's very, very cute. So, so I'm kind of curious like about trends in, in the pet industry that you've observed over the years. So you've been in business for 13 years, right? Yep. Um, so have you noticed that people are celebrating their dog's birthdays a lot more now than, than ever before? Or has it always been <clears throat> happening in your circle? You know, uh, in my particular uh, boutique, uh, we have uh, celebrated birthdays for a long time. So this wasn't just a, you know, a, oh, let me try this out, you know, kind of idea. Um, we had been doing it for a long time. And in fact, one of the things that I do that kind of uh, separates me from my boutique and um, uh, bakery competition is that I had the idea one day uh, or the inspiration to create a self-serve um, situation for pet owners because pet owners could, you know, it's, they're barely remembering their own birthdays, let alone <laughs> their dogs. So a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times they are shopping last minute and they want to pick up a cake or a cupcake to celebrate their dog. And um, San Diegans are in particular very last minute people. And so I, you know, it's just, there's just so much fabulous happening here and it's always, you know, beautiful beautiful and sunshiny. So it's basically everybody has to like figure out, you know, what's the best thing that they're doing that day. So, um, so they're very last minute about a lot of their plans. And so I wanted to offer a self-serve kind of last minute opportunity for the clientele. So I, uh, went on this journey of, um, 
uh, finding vintage refrigerators that went with our 50s theme that I can then showcase our cakes and cupcakes. And they ended up, you know, uh, because they're so old, being freezers. So we uh, refurbished them back to their natural beauty and we served all of our cakes in there. So that way people can just come up you know, off the street and purchase our cakes and cupcakes. So we've been selling it like that for several years, way before I even started the bakery. So me adding the bakery, um, you know, I was already familiar with the retailing and merchandising and marketing for so many years. I just wasn't the creator and now I'm the creator as well. I love that. And I, and I love that you talk a little bit about um, uh, merchandising and, and, how you went to such extreme extents to find these like perfect refrigerator freezers to store everything. In. Do you have any advice for someone um, coming from your expertise about what, what kind of elements are essential to have in a brick and mortar business? Yes, absolutely. Actually, when I, um, you know, when I've spoken at Super Zero Global, this is something that I talk about in, uh, in great length. And I think nowadays with the popularity of online shopping um, and all the big box stores, I think what our, um, us small brick and mortar stores have is personality and the, the ability to be flexible and make changes, you know, on a whim. Um, if something isn't working, then, you know, you can change it tomorrow. Um, where a lot of the, these, you know, corporations don't have that ability. Um, it, you know, it'll take their legal department months to make a decision on something where as a small brick and mortar store, we can add a new selfie accent wall or, uh, you know, change our decor around without, a planogram from corporate so it really allows us a lot of flexibility and one thing that I find really important especially with the uh, birthday celebration market um, that is just so perfect for Instagram and all of your Instagram yes. clientele um, <laughs> is is that you can create those, you know, opportunities, you know, people don't want to just go to a store to buy stuff anymore. That's why a lot of those big stores are closing because it's not about buying of the stuff. We can do that online. Um, people are choosing uh, to go to certain businesses because they really want to have an experience and they want to share that experience. So I try to create within my small brick and mortar store um, as many experiences as you can have. So the experience of having great customers service, the experience of, you know, seeing these beautiful refurbished uh, vintage refrigerators, the experience of being able to choose, you know, the delicate, beautiful little uh, pastries out of, out of our bakery case. Um, we've got gumball machines, we've got little piano, you know, things like that that are just make it really um, an, an unusual experience um, that's worth having that people really want to share and tell their friends and family about. I find that to be very important for brick and mortar retails, retailers today. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's just like you're, you're creating a special place that people can't experience anywhere else. Um, and that's, that's why people keep coming back. Yes, exactly. And I, it's the biggest compliment to me when people walk into my store, and this does happen often, and they say, oh, this place just makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And, I think and I'm that's like, like, yes. That's part of the perks of like being in the pet industry is that like really our whole existence is based around like happiness and joy and our wonderful dogs who are just so loving. And so, so we get to really have fun with our businesses, unlike, unlike some other industries. Yes, I'm, I'm so glad. I mean, I, I have no idea what I would post if I sold light bulbs every day. <laughs> Well, you probably post a picture of a dog next to a light bulb. <laughs> probably. And my kids wouldn't want to come, you know, on the weekends or in the summer to, you know, uh, to hang out at the shop if I only sold light bulbs. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it makes it a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. Now my job is basically making those amazing animals that make us happy every day. I get to make them happy. So it's really, you know, it's really a beautiful job. It's, it's not without its stress for sure, but it is, it's a, it's a great path that I'm on right now. Do you want to grow your pack, get free treats and have everyone on Instagram adore your dog? You need to grow your pup fluence. 
Most of the advice out there from so-called Instagram experts is either too common sense or so unclear that you can't figure out how to make it work for you. That's because it's not designed for pet people. If you struggle to grow your following even though your pet is cute AF, catch yourself comparing your account to big deal pet influencers, and work like a dog to take photos that just don't feel up to snuff, then you need Instagram strategy for the pet obsessed, aka inspo. It's an online course I've created to give pet parents and brands like you clear guidance and helpful solutions to create the Instagram account of your dreams. You can learn all about it at wearwagrepeat.com slash inspo. Make sure you hit it up before July 31st to take advantage of a special introductory offer. That's wearwagrepeat.com slash I-N-S-P-O. So do you have a favorite aspect of being a pet industry entrepreneur? I would say, you know, for me, I've been an artist and a designer since I was six. So anything that I can do that I'm creating and designing, um, I, you know, that's, that's the high for me, you know? Um, and I would say, you know, at this point, um, being able to inspire others to, uh, you know, to realize their passion, that really helps. Uh, that That's so satisfying. I mean, honestly, if it weren't for my husband, I could fly around the country and help people, you know, set up and design and redesign their stores all day long. But, you know, at the end of the day, we still, <laughs> I still have three kids and three dogs and a snake and a husband at home. So I can't do that. But, but Leo, that would be such an um, amazing TV show. <laughs> I think that we need to pitch this to Netflix. We need, actually, I think we really need like a whole dog network because absolutely like, every reality show out there, I think there should be a corresponding dog related version of it. <laughs> oh yes. Can you imagine nailed it for dog bakeries? Oh my God. Oh my God. I auditioned <laughs> for nailed it. You did? Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How was that? I was, wa- well, it was like an online application process, but I was, wa- I love that show. And um, I was like, I would be the perfect person for this because I bake my dogs cakes and they look really cute. They don't necessarily taste really great because they're for dogs. <laughs> Um, and I just thought it would be so, I thought it, I would be like a great like character on, on the show. Um, and so it was, it was absolutely, it's a very lengthy, lengthy application. They want to know everything about you. And I had to film five separate videos of like, this is what wow. I want to make. Here I am getting the ingredients ready. Here I am making it. Here I am taking it out. Um, it, it was quite a process, <laughs> but I did not get selected. <laughs> Oh, oh, I would have selected you. You're adorable. Oh, thank you. Well, I think you are too. And I, I think that like, this is the future of television is just all dog shows. <laughs> I, I know, I know we would, we would all be watching like 24 seven. It would be great. I mean, you know, they're just so, they're just so fun loving. And I really find, uh, what I love about the pet industry is that, you know, <clears throat> and you know, dog people are just, you know, I, I, I love this brand. Dog people are cool. Cause I totally feel it. It's like, you know, dog people, you know, you have to have a good sense of humor. I mean, let's face it. You're picking up poop like every day after your dog. I mean, you really have to be down to earth and have a good, you know, sense of humor to do that on a daily basis. Uh, and you know, so that's, what I find about the um, pet industry is that, you know, it's just a lot of just very fun loving people and it's a great industry to be in. Not to mention that there is great growth for uh, female entrepreneurs in this industry more so than a lot of other industries. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's amazing how many women I've been able to reach out to just to be on this show. And there's thousands more for me to interview. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. So um, if someone is just getting started uh, in the pet business with their, with their own career in some way, are there any key activities that you would recommend they invest their time in to, you know, make the most of their new business? 
Well, I mean, I definitely would say, uh, you know, work for somebody else in this industry first, if not multiple people, um, to get a handle on what it is that is, you know, going to your passion. Because, you know, there have been ups and, you know, ups and downs in uh, my business, uh, and as there is with, you know, any business. And, um, but if you have that passion, you know, if it's about the passion and not the money, then you will stick with it. And, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, I, I wouldn't be asked to be on a show like this, right? If, if I hadn't stuck to it all these years. And, uh, and I wouldn't be speaking at, you know, big industry trade shows for the same reason. So I would say just find what your passion is and work in the industry for reputable, you know, companies so that you kind of have that experience, um, the ins and outs of that experience. Um, and I would also say, if you're opening a brick and mortar, make sure to have services. Um, you know, back when the recession hit and, uh, you know, even big corporations didn't know the recession was coming. I was a, a you know, a two year young business and I had to make some really hard choices in order to keep my business open during that time, you know, for a few years. And um, I did notice that all the boutique only stores around me um, that were open during that time closed. A lot of them closed where what was more unique about my business was that, you know, and now this is a little bit more common um, was that I had a strong grooming department and a boutique. So I wasn't just a boutique um, because, you know, if you have a service, you know, you want to make sure to add a product. If you have products, you want to add a service because it's the, you know, constant, you know, clientele that has to come in for grooming that's purchasing your retail. Um, so I would say every kind of brick and mortar business out there should have some type of service, whether it's grooming or dog walking or hotel. I mean, there's some kind of service that kind of keeps the business going while, you know, we have those downtimes and people aren't buying, you know, a $45 doggy tutu, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's an essential. I don't know what right? you're <laughs> I know. You know, or like a $250 carrier or something like that. So, you know, it's fun to have those items, um, but it's not going to always sell. So, you know, for me personally, what helped get me through is having the services. The ser services were my bread and butter. And um, so that kind of helped me get through those rough times when a lot of my competition was not able to make it through. That is such great advice. And that, that reminds me, I used to work with a local chamber of commerce and there was a woman who had a, a clothing boutique on the main drag there for that she'd had for like 20 years or something. And I, I asked her one day, you know, what do you think is like the key to your business being around for so long? And there was a lot of hair salons on this street. And she said that that, that was it. You know, people would come and get their hair done you know, once a month or however often they would come in and her store was like right door, right downstairs or something like that. And that kind of kept people coming back in, even though she didn't offer, you know, the salon, yeah. services, they were still like right there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look at our, you know, in the pet industry, the pet co's and the pet smarts, um, how many of them don't have a grooming department? Mm hmm. Yes. So you see, that's what brings in their clientele and then they're selling a ton of their products. So, you know, you just look at the successful models that are out there, you know, and, you know, you don't really, there's very few businesses that are, you know, the concepts are so brand new. You got to look at what is, you know, what's, what's been going on that's really successful and really analyze why that's successful. Yeah, I, I love that. Very inspiring. Um, so b before we have to jump off here, tell us about your dogs. And did you say you have a snake? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I lost that uh, battle with my husband. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so, yeah. So first of all, I had Frida, which was my chihuahua that inspired and we lost her. Um, she inspired, you know, my business mm -hmm. and we lost her. And as soon as I, um, you know, a few years ago, and as soon as I, you know, felt like I could have a dog again, um, my friend, uh, Gabriel Fetosa, who has the grooming salon in the back, says, hey, I know somebody who um, they're going to be retiring, you know, the standard poodle, um, and she just needs a really good forever home. And, you know, honestly, I never thought even through my grooming career that I would 
have the time or, or be able to, you know, uh, give the amount of attention <laughs> that a standard poodle deserves. <laughs> um, but honestly, she's like a unicorn. There is only standard people, standard poodle owners understand this relationship. They look at you with people eyes. They are just so remarkable in every way. Um, I mean, she is like my best friend, a nanny, security, you know, great for marketing, you know, all of those things. She's that a leader so cool. in our store. Yeah, just the, just, uh, she's just amazing. And then a similar thing happened, and that's how we got Sugar too, is that he had a friend that was retiring, a champion Bichon. So when she came to me, she had her big, huge, grown out, you know, Bichon head um and she was afro. just she was kind of, yeah <laughs> yeah she did and um so I, i'm sure uh you know bashan groomers that love that big coat are not happy with me but she is no longer a show dog she now has a fabulous forever home and so we just wanted to give her a little personality that she deserved and we just cut down her fur and um keep her colored because she also came with an ocd kind of habit of licking her paws mm -hmm. and so we decided to turn that negative into a positive and so that's why we keep color on her now <laughs> and um and then we have a snake um and so my husband has always his entire life he's like dr doolittle we are the perfect couple because <laughs> <laughs> seriously because the way he talks to animals is like the the most endearing thing you will ever hear from a man but he loves all animals and creatures and living things so you know for example we had a you know uh, a caterpillar that was about to wreak havoc on our tomatoes and he gently takes the caterpillar out and puts it outside you know <laughs> we don't we don't kill those those things we don't kill living beings and so he always really wanted a snake and we we really you know I was like no it's not cuddly it's not cute but he won and I said okay only if I get to design his house and I get to name it and uh, I have a pretty strong art history background I'm a little art history nerd and lived in Europe and so forth and so I um, I got to name our snake um, Marcel Duchamp and he has a <laughs> <laughs> he has a French farmhouse at the her home so uh, yeah so yes yeah, so and then we also have a dog that a friend of mine um, that is a uh, pet walker she found a dog just randomly on the on the street um, yeah. she looked to be about eight weeks old oh and, my goodness um, yes and she's black and white we don't know exactly what she is but she has extremely strong terrier traits so she might be a mixed terrier chihuahua mix or full terrier, but um, she is quite the little devil. Her name is Truffle. So um, we actually we actually gifted her to our 16-year-old uh, daughter for her birthday, her 16th birthday. So she um, she's starting her journey on dog ownership. So it's really, really beautiful to see that connection. It's really That's sweet. That's very special. How wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. I can't believe that it's already been almost a half an hour. Um, so we have to end the episode, but tell everyone where they can find you online. So uh, we are in the midst of changing our brand name from Bow Wow Beauty Shop to Bow Wow Dog Bakery. So that website will be um, changing soon to Bow Wow Dog Bakery. But for now, you can find us um, on our website at bowwowbeautyshop.com, and that's S-H-O-P-P-E, or uh, feel free to visit our Instagram account, which is Bow Wow Dog Bakery. And for retailers um, that are wanting to wholesale our goodies because our cakes are about three to four inches tall they're pretty big um, compared to industry standards uh, and uh, they sell extremely well um, I would recommend going to wholesale pets which we just launched on Friday oh um, cool so I know it was so exciting I feel so like grown up and official having my business on wholesale pet because I have you know touted that amazing it's like it's like Amazon for the pet industry. I it's love a, that website. I have an account on there and I, I, I get know. for my for my online shop. And oh, uh, it's lose, really lose. fun. Yes, you could lose yourself for hours on that website. So wholesale pet under Bow Wow Dog Bakery. You can find our products there if you want to wholesale our products there. Awesome. That is so exciting. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Tori. I look forward to hearing more episodes. 
Thank you for listening to the Wear Wag Repeat podcast. You can fetch show notes at wearwagrepeat.com. If you like what you hear, please hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And until next time, we'll see you around the dog park.